Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive. Oh my gosh, gorgeous fall weather, which in LA, which is where I happen to be right now, um, in LA, it's kind of like summer weather and we have 80s or 90s going on in uh, the latter part of September. So that's how we roll in LA. <laughs> and that's why I'm in LA because in Maine, it got kind of chilly and I I thought I'm going to go back to where it's warmer, although I am missing the gorgeous, truly, truly fall weather. The real fall happens up there in, in a colder climate. So in the Northeast, it's gorgeous and the leaves are changing and I'm not there to enjoy it. So, oh well, warm weather for me. So really happy to have you here. If you're here at the Heal Your Hunger show for the first time, I want to say welcome. This is a show where you're going to get uh, a lot of insight into why you go to the refrigerator six times of an evening, wondering what's in there that's going to satisfy you. You're in the right place if you've been up and down the scale jillions of times and you're sick of it, absolutely sick of the fight with your weight. Um, you're in the right place if you have uh, snacks that turn into binges. You're in the right place if you have stubborn weight that won't uh, get off your body no matter how hard you exercise. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you've been here before, I'm so grateful you came back. That means the world to me. Um, before I get started, I want to say that there is a group uh, that you can join and get support. It's called The Secret Sauce to End Emotional Eating. It's on Facebook, and that's where um, I am recording this live. And you can hear it live in the Facebook group. You can comment. Um, you can uh, get notifications of uh, trainings that I'm doing before anybody else. Um, and just, you know, if you have questions, if there's things you are curious about, I'm in there and I'm happy to answer them for you. So join us. Go to Facebook and type in the secret sauce to end emotional eating and it'll be great to have you. Also, if you're not sure if you're an emotional, you're an, an emotional eater, it's kind of a lot to say, a big mouthful. Um, you can go to healyourhunger.com and take the quiz. And if you take the quiz, you'll find out. You'll literally get a personalized score and then you'll know what to do about it. So uh, definitely check that out at free quiz at healyourhunger.com. Yeah, so I've got a topic for you. Today, I want to talk about unconsciously gaining weight. And guess why? All my topics that I like to talk about typically come from my own personal experience. So yes, uh, today is no different. And so I want to talk about an experience I had recently of unconsciously gaining weight. And it's kind of a bummer when you have a business that um, has something to do with weight loss. I don't focus on weight loss. I focus on the uh, deeper uh, causes. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm, I'm in the ballpark and I'm gaining weight without realizing, OMG, how embarrassing. So, um, but, you know, as you know, I like to be transparent about what's going on with me. So, so here we go. Um, unconsciously gaining weight. What happened? I'll just lay it out for you and what happened for me. Um, I was in Maine and having a grand old time and, and my weight was great. I was feeling good about it. Um, but a few things happened, I think that triggered my weight gain. And I did not know that I gained weight until I got back to LA uh, a week ago, and I had um, hired somebody to do a photo shoot. My very best uh, photographer, my, my one of my, I mean, she's the only one I use, frankly. Her name's Starla Fortunato. She's amazing. If you're in LA, she's She's beautiful and wonderful. Um, but she and I spoke and I said, yes, I want to, um, it's time for another photo shoot. You know, I like to do a photo shoot because I use a lot of photos in my marketing um, and, you know, press stuff. And, and uh, if I'm speaking, I just, I want to make sure I'm as updated as possible. So, so here we are, coming, I'm coming back to LA to do this photo shoot. And she comes over and we talk about outfits that I'm going to wear for this upcoming photo shoot. 
and, and it's all well and good. She leaves. And I try on some of the clothes that we decided I was going to wear. And guess what? Some of them, like this particular pair of jeans, barely fit me. Like I had to squeeze and stuff myself into them. And I was just like, are you kidding me? I was so bummed. I mean, I have gained, I think, um, well, this was last week. Uh, hopefully, it, maybe things have taken a turn for the better. But, uh, you know, I had gained, I'd say, about five pounds. Um, and, you know, to a, to a thin person, that's a lot of weight. Um, and, it, it, I mean, I, I've heard people who are, are, you know, have a lot of weight to lose say, ah, five pounds, big deal. But when you're, you know, on a thinner side, it's, it is a pretty big deal. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and <laughs> especially when you can't fit into your pants. So um, anyway, that's what happened for me. And so I was horrified. And what I did is I called Starla up and I said, girl, can we reschedule this shoot? I was desperate. I felt so desperate. I'm like, there's no way I can do a photo shoot, pay all this money and get a bunch of photos and then hate what I see, you know, I don't want to do that. So I said, can we reschedule? Like, please, can we reschedule? And the photo shoots three days away, or it might have even been two days at Wednesday. Yeah. Two days away. She's like, well, sure. Um, you know, if it's really that important to you, we can reschedule. It just cost you $750, <laughs> which is not something I'm going to do. Like I'm not going to pay a cancellation fee. And the reason for that is she has other people. She had a team coming with her, a makeup artist and, and two helpers. And she, you know, she's on the line to pay them. They can't get work that fast if she cancels. So she's got to pay them. And, and hence there's this fee. Um, and, and I'm like, okay, uh, I don't want to pay that fee. And she talked me through it and she was very kind. And she said, Trisha, I did a photo shoot and I was nine pounds um, heavier than usual. And I get where you're coming from. I get the uncomfortability of it. And I want to honor that in you and not say, don't worry about it. Cause I know, you know, we can worry about these things. She was very sweet and kind of talked me through it. And, and I got off the panic of it and I started thinking, you know, okay, if I go through the, with this, how am I going to handle it? Like, how am I going to handle seeing photos where I don't necessarily like the size I am? And I'm sure you can relate if you have struggled with food and weight or body dysmorphia or eating disorders or disordered eating or any of the above. So we got off the phone. I said, let's just do it. Let's just plan on doing it. I'll deal with it. And, and so I gave it some thought. And what I realized is that I'm the only one who's going to notice for one, like nobody is scrutinizes my body. Like I do, even though I'm so much gentler with myself and my body than I've ever been. I just, I've come a long way, baby, in terms of my own body image stuff, but I am an emotional eater and I, you know, started out that way from, from the word go. So I've still got that ability in me to panic about my weight. And so I had to sit down and think about it. I thought nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to care. I am the only one who's going to notice or care because I know, I mean, intellectually, I know I look great. You know, I, I still, I like how I look. I like my clothes. You know, I've got a lot of life in me. You know, God is coursing through me, you know, because I'm not overeating and I've got that light. I know that. So I had to kind of talk myself off the ledge and say, Trisha, you're going to look great in these photos. And what I realized is nobody's going to care but me. So the only person I have to reckon with is me. Can I handle this? Can I handle looking at photos? And in order to look at photos and not be critical of my weight, I'm going to have to be sweet to myself. I'm going to have to be kind and compassionate. And if anybody relates to these, these conversations that you have to have in your head, please post in the group. Please post in the comment section. You know, let me know. Show me some love. Let me know. Please like this post. I, I, I appreciate it, um, this video. So anyway, this is what I realized. I'm the only one who's going to have a problem with this. And all that means is I've got to adjust. I have to adjust and use this as an opportunity to practice what I preach and to be self-accepting and loving. And I thought, can I do that? And the answer is yes. Yes, I can. And, um, and I must, right? I must. I must be kind and sweet to myself. And, um, and I made a pact with myself. I said, Trisha, you know, you're going to do this photo shoot. You're going to stand proud. You're going to be happy about how you look. Um, because intellectually, you know, 
you know you're going to be fine and look fine. So the only thing that you got to do is give yourself some love. Give yourself some love and don't go to that dark place of self-criticism or berating yourself or whatever. And so I made that pact with myself. I said, okay, you know, the only problem with doing the photo shoot is between my ears. And so can I deal with that? And I just decided, I made a decision that yes, with God's loving grace, I can be compassionate and loving and not self recriminating or judgmental. And so that's my pact to myself is to appreciate what I see. And, um, and so that's lesson number one, you know, is we can make that decision. I mean, I know, uh, I know a lot of you are meanies to yourself, just like I have been and, um, and still can be, but I had to make a pact with myself. And I asked that of you make a pact with yourself, not to give yourself a hard time for whatever weight you're at right now. And that doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, just give up and not do anything about it. Of course, you know, putting an end to emotional eating is going to improve every area of your life and you're going to feel better about yourself and you're going to like how you look and, and it's going to have a positive effect on everybody and everything. Uh, but in the meantime, be kind and sweet to yourself, make a decision that you're not going to give yourself a hard time, especially because if you have gained weight unconsciously, if COVID has, you know, caused you to take a nosedive into the food um, you know, it's especially important to be compassionate with yourself and realize that we're not bad people if we gain weight. Uh, we're people who are afraid, you know, and that fear has driven us to the very form of comfort that we always turn to, you know, or always have turned to. So, um, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. So I just really ask, ask you to be kind and sweet to yourself and make a decision to do that. And I, you know, um, anyway, so the photo shoot went great. It was awesome. I had different clothes that I wore, you know, different changes of clothes. Photo shoots are really fun. They're totally, I mean, it's total self-absorption, frankly. It's all about me. You know, the makeup artist comes, it's all about me. And the, the you know, Starla is amazing. And she's just make sure I have everything I need. She brings a catered lunch and it's so fun. It's sort of like getting married. You know how everybody just, you know, you're just it when you're getting married very self-obsessed <laughs> experience. But anyway, so this is, I did this for an afternoon. So it was super fun. And then we did, we went to the beach. Um, we did some shots at the beach and it, um, soon I'm going to post some of these photos in here simply because I'm talking about it. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek of that in the secret sauce group. So anyway, I want to share more about this experience and, and what I learned from my unconscious weight gain because it was very disturbing to me, you know, and because I do what I do, I'm an emotional eating, you know, coach and owner of Heal Your Hunger, uh, I had to take a look at how did this happen? Because it didn't just happen. Okay, weight gain never just happens. Doesn't mean I need, to, I need to beat myself about it, but I do have to do some sleuthing work and get honest about kind of how this came about because I don't want it to keep happening. You know, I don't want to be caught off guard. And one of the reasons why I was caught off guard um, in terms of not realizing it was happening is because I don't weigh myself. And any of my clients know, you know, there's, there's never been anything useful that's come from weighing myself. Um, I might have caught it sooner had I weighed myself, you know, um, but weighing myself has generally been something that's had very uh, diminishing returns for me. Anytime I weighed myself, it, you know, I've ended up gaining weight. And because weighing yourself is like, if you give the scale the power to make you feel good, it get, you give it the power, you, you let it give you the, you, you give it the power to make you feel bad. If you give it the power to make you feel good, you also give it the power to make you feel bad. And, um, and I've done that too many times, you know, and also my experience with emotional eaters is that if those, if the scale says something good, like we went, lost weight. We use that as a way to rationalize eating more. Like, oh, I've got some wiggle room. I'm going to eat more. I'm going to eat, you know, dessert this time. So we put the weight back on. That makes no sense. Um, also, if it tells us something we're not happy about and we're kind of pissed off about, uh, we're going to use that as an excuse to eat. We're like, screw it. Those workouts aren't working. I'm just going to eat. You know, and we have a little temper tantrum. So that's the problem and the trickiness about those, you know, uh, uh, trips to the scale. <laughs> so it's really, really important for me not to weigh myself. And I don't, when I go to the doctor, I turn around, I said, I don't want to know my weight. You can take my weight, but I'm not going to look. 
uh, just makes me more sane. But, you know, the drawback is you might catch yourself off guard of having gained weight and not realizing it. So how did this happen for me? A few things, you know, and um, I was talking with my clients last night in our group call, our amazing group call. We talked about rationalizations. You know, most leaders have a rationalizing mind. And I've been doing this work for 32 years, and I still have a rationalizing mind that once in a while will trip me up. And it's very important, you know, that I take a look at what, what happened. What was I thinking? You know, overeating starts with a thought. It is not, it does not start with the piece of food. It does not start with the grocery store. It starts with a thought, a rationalizing thought, a little tricky thought. And we have very tricky thinking. Okay. Emotional eaters are not only overeaters, they're overthinkers and we think the hell out of everything, don't we? Um, if you're relating to what I'm saying, please comment in the comment section. Um, so, so anyway, what happened for me are a few things. When I look back, I see, first of all, I started cycling early in the summer, which was an amazing experience. I've talked about it on my podcast. Cast. I cycled this morning. I came back to LA and I thought, I don't know if I can cycle. My boyfriend's not with me. I usually go with him. I might just blow it off. But he's a good coach, and he has told me, like, on the phone, hey, make sure you get out there on the bike, you know, keep it consistent. So, like a good student, like my good students, I got out on the bike this morning. It was beautiful. I prayed on my bike. Um, it was, I like biking in the early morning here in L.A. Um, I, I rode down to the beach. Uh, it was a nice, it's about, I'm about three and a half miles from the Santa Monica beach and the pier. It's just gorgeous. So I took advantage of it and I had a great ride. But early in the summer, I started riding, which means I started exercising more than normal. I'm normally just walking. So I'm burning calories and I'm working my body and I'm getting fitter and I'm, I'm using my muscles. Um, and at some point, my boyfriend said, you know, you're burning a lot more calories. You have to make sure that you get, you know, some carbs in you and, 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 and that you're, you're getting fortified. Well, tell an emotional eater that they, sh they, they have to eat carbs. Like it's very, you know, medically necessary that eat, they eat carbs and Katie bar the door. <laughs> so, and I knew when he said it, I'm like, ah, uh, that's tricky business. First of all, you know, that guy can eat whatever he wants and he's, he's, you know, a beanstalk. So, because he rides so much, he's a, he's an athlete. He rides really hard. He burns like a thousand to two cal, 2000 calories a day. So he can eat whatever he want, wants and it doesn't, you know, end up on his butt like it does for me in his stomach. So I'm like, I, I consciously, I knew this guy's t giving me it, it, like advice about what to eat and he's not qualified. He does not know what I've been through. So I took it with a grain of salt, but it's tricky, isn't it? Because that idea got in my head anyway, even though I was like, uh, I'm not going to listen to that. I did listen to that. Part of me was like, ooh, that's really true. I probably need, need to eat more carbs because I don't eat a lot of carbs because I gain weight so easily. So there's, okay, that's problem number one. That got, that, I, that one idea, my, my rationalizing mind took that and ran with it. Okay, so there's, there's one thing. Also, when I look back, what I realize is that I was feeling afraid about this added exercise um, into my routine because I'm not typically an athlete or hardcore athlete. Um, and, and I've never, you know, I've just never done hard exercise. And even though biking's not that hard, if you're not trying to go really fast or race or anything, it's still, you know, going up heels, you're, you're, you're panting pretty hard. You know, you're, you're, you're burning some fuel. And so um, I found, you know, that I was afraid at times when I was going out on a ride. I thought, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with him. And it's not like he goes fast. He, I'm his recovery, right? He goes out later and, in, in, you know, goes full throttle. But with me, I'm like his, his little, little leisurely toot, you know. And so um, we don't go fast. But still, I just kind of felt like, I don't know if I can do this ride. I don't know if I can go for an hour. I don't know if I can go for an hour and a half. I don't know if I can go for two hours. You know, I was working my way up in time. But I found that I had a little bit of fear. And so between 
the fear of not knowing if my body could handle it and this idea that I should eat more calories. And the third factor was that on this app that I use, the Strava app, you can set it to where it tells you how many calories you've burned, which it didn't tell me initially, but then um, I changed it to the calories burned. And I knew when I was doing that, I knew that could be tricky stuff for me because I, I know the tricks and turns of the emotional eating mind. I know it through and through. That doesn't mean I'm not susceptible to it. So I set it to the calories burned. And when I saw how many calories I was burning, I started to think that carb idea is probably true. I probably do need some extra carbs and I probably need something to, you know, make up for all those calories I'm burning. So there we have it, right? The idea, it always starts with an idea and it always starts with a rationalization. So here I am building a case for the fact that I need a little extra food, um, which on paper is not false, right? If somebody is an athlete and they're burning a bunch of calories, they do need extra fuel. But I was not burning enough to really warrant it because I go for walks every day and I burn fuel and I don't count the calories. I don't notice, I don't have anything telling me how many calories I've burned and I don't make up for it. You know, it's part of my routine is I burn calories when I walk and it works with the amount of food that I eat. But here I am all of a sudden changing the game. Okay, um, my, my rationalizing emotional eater is getting involved and um, I've got a new idea, which is I need to take charge and I need to supplement and I need extra food in order to do these rides. When I look back, I see what happened. Okay, these three things were involved, but the real like driver of this and of my rationalizing mind was fear. I was afraid that I couldn't do it. I was afraid I couldn't do those rides. I was afraid of getting tired. I was afraid of getting hungry. I was afraid that I'd be out there and I'd be hungry and I'd be lacking in energy and I wouldn't be able to do it. And I don't even know what would happen if that happened. But, you know, and there were times when I was hungry and, and I didn't have as much energy, of course, but I'm not racing. I'm not, you know, competing. I'm not like out there burning it up. I'm just going for a bike ride and learning, learning to use my body and seeing beautiful sights. And so this fear was irrational. I, I didn't need to be afraid of that. Of course I could do it. But you see, to give you a little history, which may be similar to your history, I grew up as a fat girl. Okay. I grew up as a fat girl and I do not have a self confidence concept of being an athlete. I can't, it's, I'm still trying to wrap my arms around that. Truth is I have a very athletic body. You know, I have good genes. My mom was a synchronized swimmer growing up. You know, she was all through college and um, high school. She did synchronized swimming. She is a student to this day at 83 years old. She skis and she hikes She's very strong. She's, she's got an athletic body. And my dad, God rest his soul, he's been gone for 19 years, but, you know, he jogged every day. He was, a, he, was, he was very athletic. He played rugby in college. You know, he's got, he had good genes too. Um, so I've got it. I've got what it takes to go for an hour or two hour bike ride. <laughs> but I don't have the self-concept to know that and feel secure in that knowledge. And that's where the fear came in, okay? I still, it, you know, part of me still feels like that fat girl who was picked last for the team in elementary school. That happened. You know, nobody wanted me on the team. I was fat. I mean, I, I just, athletics were not my thing. You know, I couldn't, I didn't run. I didn't, I didn't, I, re, I did ride my bike when I was a kid, but just around the neighborhood. But I wasn't like some of my friends who are jocks, you know, that wasn't me. Um, and, and I mean, I could have been, even at the weight I was, of course I could have been athletic. You know, my weight didn't have to determine that, but, but I had low self-esteem and I was also um, asthmatic. I had some asthma going on, not real severe, but I had asthma. And so exercising was hard for me. You know, my heavy, my breathing was heavy. You know, I was, I came in last or close to last when we would do the, the class, you know, jogging the mile, like, you know, in school, they make you jog a mile or whatever. And they time you, I was usually close to last. 
um, cause I had heavy breathing. I was asthmatic partly cause of my weight, um, and eating dairy. <laughs> um, so, um, that, you know, contributed to my feeling like I can't do this, you know, and it's just amazing to me how deep that st- those roots run, you know, and I, and I haven't, I've done some writing about this since, you know, this happened to realize that, that, that fear of not being able to make it, that fear of not being able to go for that full ride, that fear of getting tired, you know, and, and, and feeling weak, that was all something that was, um, you know, playing a part in my feeling like I needed more food. So usually when we overeat on an unconscious level, we think we need the food because it's going to give us something, right? It's going to do something for us. And in this case, it was going to give me the strength to do these rides. Um, and, you know, when my clients, if they have trouble with eating, it's, it's always based in some kind of fear that they're not going to be okay if they don't. And we have a very instinctive, deep, deep rooted belief that somehow we're not going to be okay unless we eat more food. And that's what drives our eating. And it doesn't matter if you're not aware of that belief, it's unconscious or subconscious, you know, but, it, but, and mine was even a little bit conscious. Like I would pray when I'd go out for a bike ride with Richard, I, I would pray and be like, God, please get me through this. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can do it. So I would even pray. So I was conscious of those thoughts, but I wasn't conscious that my, my eating more food was based on the fear that I wasn't going to be okay, that I wouldn't make it on those rides. I had come up with some rationalizations that sounded perfectly plausible and reasonable. And I acted based on those. And guess what? They were rationalizations based on fear, not on truth. And that's how I unconsciously gained weight is I, I talk myself into it. My fe- I let the fear, I didn't address it head on. I didn't realize how powerful it was. And I let it convince me and rationalize that I needed more food than I actually needed. So that's how it happened. And I'm, I'm laying it out there for you because guess what? It's probably happening to you here and there <laughs> or all the time. And um, yeah, and, and I think it's an important thing to talk about. Um, I rationalized eating a little bit more carbs. So I, I uh, ate more carbs than I usually do. I even rationalized eating Co- this was my this is my thing during COVID is I started eating dairy again. I started eating cheese, um, which I don't think my body really does well with, and most don't. So um, I mean, a lot of health. I mean, I I know a lot of health gurus, and they they don't have good things to say about dairy. So, um, but it is part of my when I was cooking at home, I started to use dairy because it made my food taste better. So I've done some rationalizing, and I ended up gaining some weight on account of it, about five pounds. You know, I have since you know after having that experience last week, I've cleaned things up by the grace of God. You know, I've cleaned things up. I'm a lot more conscious. And I'm realizing that I'm going to be okay going for a bike ride, you know, without supplementing, you know, and eating more because I'm not going for hard bike rides. I'm not burning a ton of calories. So, you know, if I were, I would adjust, you know, but, um, but I was mostly afraid. So um, I share all this in hopes that it can help you. And certainly, um, you know, the self care is so, so important because, that, that very, very primal belief that we're not going to be okay unless we eat more food, that comes from a deep place. And it comes from a place of fear, of course. Um, and the way to combat that fear for me has been self-care and to really take, to really take care of myself so that I had a stronger sense of well-being and, and, a, and a trust that I'd be okay you know, I've gone out from bike rides since last week, you know, where I'm just, I'm just doing my regular routine food wise and it's working out fine. I'm walking through that fear. I'm cycling through that fear, not walking through that fear. Um, you know, and I'm okay. I'm proving to myself that I'm okay and I've got what it takes. And, um, you know, but I do that through my self-care practices. I, I get that self sense of well being. I get that sense that all is okay. I'm going to be okay. I don't need food to intervene and make me okay. So the self-care, the meditation, the prayer, the writing, the reading spiritual literature, the you know, connecting with other people, you know, certainly um, my clients are connecting with each other on our group calls and through 
um, our Facebook group. And, and these things make us feel okay. They, they help us take a deep, you know, community breath and realize, you know, it's all okay. It's going to be okay. You know, we don't need to lean on food in order to get through life. So I offer that to you. I hope it's helpful. And um, yeah, you know, if you're unconsciously gaining weight, you know, it's, it's time to get honest. You know, it, it has a, like everything to do with getting honest. I had to look fair and square about what, what, what I've been doing, you know, and make corrections. Um, and so uh, I'm just grateful that I caught it when I did. Um, and I'm, you know, thankfully I wasn't binging or anything. It was just a little bit, you know, a little bit here and there, a little extra food, um, you know, driven by fear. And I'm hopefully on a better track and, and feeling better in my clothes. So love you so much. Uh, please make sure to comment in the Facebook group, the secret sauce to end emotional eating now love to hear your comments. If you relate, please say so. Let me know I'm not alone. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Love you. Love you. Love you until next time. Take care. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.